welcome to Built for Life. This is going to be a great time together and we're going to look at a new subject. We're looking at the subject of marriage, marriage today and uh, it's an important subject isn't it in these days. But before we do that let's pray together. Father in the name of Jesus I just pray that Father you will help us help us today to kind of understand how important marriage is the father sometimes we can go in our married life and kind of be immune to how supernatural marriage is to how uh, pictorial of the christ and his church it is and what an honor it is to to have a married life and so father I pray that the Holy Spirit would help us through this Built for Life uh, session to identify areas we need to adjust to live out Jesus in our marriage. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you've got your notes, that's great. Uh, if you haven't, it doesn't matter. Just always try to write no more than five bullet points down. And kind of use those bullet points as prayer opportunities to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you in those areas to change uh, where you need to change to live out Jesus in your marriage in those areas. And if you and also remember at the end we'll ask some discussion questions if you're in a group that's great or even on your own or grab a friend to help you and kind of have a time of discussion on the questions. And don't forget to write down your answers. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And so today we're looking at this subject of marriage. This is session 1A. Session 1A. And this session is all about uh, what is marriage. What is marriage? Session 1 is all about what is marriage. And so today particularly we're looking at session 1A which is God made marriage. God made marriage. So let's list, let's read and listen, of course, to the session purpose. The session purpose says this. In this session, you will realize that living in Christ and in your marriage means expressing his love, his life together as one. And so it's so important that as Christians who are married or maybe you're going into marriage, maybe you're engaged or maybe you're, you're thinking and, and praying for a wife or a husband and maybe you are considering marriage, then this is a session for you. This is a whole built for life subject for you. So whether you are married or thinking that one day you want to get married or engaged, this is important and I will encourage you to look at the word of God in these sessions to what married life is all about from a Christian perspective, from the word of God perspective. Because as Christians we have to have a biblical will for you. We have to understand that being saved isn't just about our, our eternal life. It isn't all, all about, you know, uh, getting to heaven. Uh, our Christian life is about expressing Jesus now in every area of your life, including marriage. And that is so important because even Christians can get do and get divorced. Um, you know, sometimes we can have a view that just because we're Christians, we're not going to face these tough issues. We're not going to have relationship problems in marriage. We're not going to have maybe friction in marriage and, and God will look after us. And sometimes that's the wrong view because God wants to be center of your marriage. Yes. But we have to allow him, don't we? We have to work with the Lord in all these things by his life. And sometimes as couples, as married couples, that doesn't always happen because maybe situations, stubbornness, pride, all the things of life that can come in. And it is a fact that Christian marriages do fail. They do fail. 
and uh, God wants us to understand how to pre be preventative. You know, sometimes the pastoral ministry is always about putting out the fire once it started. But I believe this Built for Life is about prevention as well as cure. And so let's prevent some things from happening. And, and let's, if there is issues, as we go through this session and through the sessions to come, learn to listen to the Holy Spirit to put things right in your married lives. And you might say, well, I'm not married yet, but you might be one day, or you might be considering it, or you might be an engaged couple. Then let this be preventative for you in living out Jesus through your married life and your relationship one with another. And so that's so important. Amen. So let, let's just go to the Bible reading section on the notes. There's three verses of scripture here. Uh, Genesis 2.23, Genesis 2.24, and Genesis 3, verse 20. In this session 1a, God made marriage. We're going to see this very clearly indeed. It says in Genesis 2.23, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She, that's Eve, shall be called woman because she was taken out of man now this is a very important thing because we we must understand that right from the beginning it was god who says like you know it's not good for man to be alone you need a helper uh, the old-fashioned word is help meet and god went to adam and we know he took Eve out of Adam. And that's so key. He says, it's bones of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Praise the Lord. So God is the one that fashioned the woman. God is the one who fashioned his wife. He came out of the side of Adam. She came out of the side of Adam. But it was God who fashioned his wife, his helpmeet, his helper and so right from the beginning we see that it was God who instituted marriage it was God who instituted a wife for Adam and this was the call we call it the law of the first principle we see that God in Genesis right from the beginning says hey Adam you need a wife hallelujah and so and don't we men sometimes we we need somebody by our side we need a help meet and we need somebody that the lord grants to us as our wife praise the lord and so right from the beginning we must all understand that it was instituted by god not by man and that's so important in these days because sometimes we can allow the world's view of marriage to infiltrate our Christian thinking, to infiltrate the church, to infiltrate the way we see marriage today. Some people see marriage today as not as husband and wife, but as a cohabiting couple. Um, and that's a lot of the time recognised as couples in a home with a family as, as right, and the law gives certain privileges to that today. But I'm not coming, and please understand me, I'm not coming from a political issue or a political mindset. The pol politics will do what politics does. That's fact. I'm not arguing with politics. But as Christians now, our worldview is not politics. Our worldview is the Bible. Our worldview is how God instituted things and how Christ wants to live through us in those areas of life such as marriage and it was God who instituted marriage it's not about cohabiting couples it's not about as some would say and you've probably heard this said oh it's only a piece of paper it's only a certificate no not at all this is something that was instituted by God from the beginning for a purpose and God always does things with purpose 
And as we go through these sessions together, we'll understand more and more what that purpose is. So you might be listening to me right now, and you might be a person, maybe you've just become a Christian, or maybe, you know, you've been going, been a Christian for a while, and nobody's ever spoken to you before. But God doesn't look at your any cohabitation couples as married. He does not. You know, and we'll find out in a minute how this works. This is about God instituting a universal law. A universal law to mankind. That's why right from the beginning it was Adam and Eve. That's mankind. What did he say? He says, she was taken out of man. She will be called woman. And so this is Adam and Eve right from the beginning, universal law unto all mankind. And so this isn't about just about, you know, the church or Christianity. This is to all people who get married. This is about, look, your bones of my bones, flesh of my flesh. This is about connection, connection. Hallelujah. That's recognized by God himself. So if you're a Christian that's cohabiting at the moment, maybe you should speak to your pastor about that. Maybe you should speak to an elder about that. Maybe you should speak to a leader in the church about that because that's not something that God wants you to continue in. Now you might say, well, I'm not ready to get married, Rich. Well, uh, that's where you need to have wise, godly counsel from the word of God. But God doesn't accept it right to be a cohabiting couple, acting as married, but are not married. Acting as married, but not married. And it's so important that all cultures from this Genesis point, as they developed throughout the world, all cultures developed marriage as something that was one uh, contractual it's covenant folks and we'll express a bit more of that in the sessions to come about it being covenant marriage is covenant it's a contract between two people male and female and it's covenant folks and when he says flesh in my flesh bones of my bones it's so important because that's not just about the lust of the eyes. That isn't just about beauty. See, sometimes people get married for beauty. Some people get married because of the lust of the eyes and the catch of the eyes. And isn't he handsome? Isn't he beautiful? And look, that's part of life. I'm, you know, we we're not knocking that aspect of life to see beauty. But the, the point of the matter is, marriage goes deeper and should go deeper than beauty alone or the outward alone. Because as you know, you can have somebody who's very beautiful or very handsome, but can be rotten in attitude and heart. And, and so that's the point. that it go, When you married, it goes beyond just the beauty, just beyond that. And it goes into something that's inward, deeper. And, that, and that's really getting back to the point of what Adam was saying. Bones of my bones, flesh of my flesh. That's inward, not just outward, folks. That's something deeper than the face value of things. In Genesis 2, verse 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, hallelujah. Once again, this, this is instituted by God. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. Now, when we're born, of course, we're born into a family unit of various types today but we're born into some sort of family union but the 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 reality is it's very interesting in this word leave 
The word leave here in this verse, shall leave his father and mother, means to loosen the bones, to leave a person. You see, you came from your parents. You came from their bones. You came from their flesh. But to find the one, to find and be with the one who is your wife and your husband, it means you leave the bones of your family. You leave that uh, kind of deep connection with your family, and there's nothing wrong with that, to be with your wife. It says cleave to your wife. And the word cleave there means to adhere as with glue, to be glued. Now, to be glued to your husband, to be glued to your wife, it means you must be unglued from your father and your mother. Not, you know, distant. That doesn't mean that. It's not about being distant. It's about that connection, that deep-rooted connection now where you are not a, what's the word, a, you know, a mother's child in the sense that some men sometimes can remain immature, can't they? And they remain a mommy's boy even when married to a wife. Some can, like, not listen to the wife and pay more attention to their family. Well, that's not the way God has institute, instituted and made marriage. He's emphasising right at the beginning, look, there's the family unit you had with your mother and father. Now you leave your mother and father. That isn't about distance or lack of respect or going to see them. No, we're not getting crazy like that. But this is about that deep-rooted heart life of decision-making and family unitness where you leave that in unit and start your own unit with your wife, with the rules that you set in place, with the purpose that you set in place, with the vision that you set in place for, as one together in your marriage living out Jesus. So you're not taking another family, another person's view, you're taking your view together as one net. And, that, and that's so important, folks, that we learn to cut, if I can say this, we cut the apron strings. This is where we get all these sayings from, uh, because they're connected right here in this verse. We cut the apron strings. Hallelujah. And that's key, folks, because for your marriage to be fruitful, for your marriage to continue strong, it's about cutting the apron strings. It doesn't mean you can't ask for advice from your parents. Absolutely. It doesn't mean you're not supported by your parents. Absolutely. But when you cleave to one another in the way that God has made marriage, the apron strings are cut, you mature and stand on your own two feet. And if you're going to make it in your marriage life, uh, if you're going to develop in your marriage life, it's about cutting those apron strings and saying, look, we are one. I'm not going to ignore my wife and listen to my mum. I'm not going to ignore my husband and listen to my dad, you know, uh, and, and do whatever they say, but I won't listen to my spouse. No, that's wrong. You're in this together now. As one, a lot of Christian couples still live with the apron strings attached and still live as individuals instead of as one one and so my encouragement to you today is look cut the apron strings if they need cutting work through your any problems together as one define your path as together as one that's so important so you're leaving and this is so important you as a husband especially you leave your father and your mother you loosen yourself 
from that connection bones, as it says, to leave means to loosen the bones. That connection, that loosening of the bones, you leave. Why? To find your wife who is your bone. Hallelujah. If I can use that term. Because he says, your bones are my bones. Flesh are my flesh. So you have to loosen the bone from what you're connected with to have and join yourself to your true bone, which is your wife. Hallelujah. And that's inward, folks. That isn't just the outward beauty. That's inward. To find your uttermost part of your being that is connected with your wife. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it says this, and, and before I go on, I just want to grab my, my Bible on my phone because I want to really show you that this is a picture of Jesus. This is why God instituted this right from the beginning of what is marriage. He instituted it because it's also a picture of Christ. Because this terminology, leave your father and mother and cleave to your wife as one flesh is really, as well, bones of my bones, flesh of my flesh, a revelation of Jesus. Even right here, it's a revelation of Jesus. In Ephesians 5, uh, verse um, 30, Ephesians 5, verse 30, talking about Christ and his bride, the church, it says, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Hallelujah. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. But notice where it says concerning Christ and his bride. For we are members of his body, flesh of his flesh, bones of his bones. Praise the Lord. And so this is the illustration of why God has made marriage. He has made marriage, folks, hallelujah, as a representation of Christ and his church, of the connection that the church has with Jesus. The Bible says we are, as born-again believers, we are one spirit with the Lord. Now, we, your wife, you're one flesh, but with the Lord, you are one spirit, folks. And that's all been brought about by the new covenant in what his blood so both natural marriage and spiritual marriage as in the being the part of the bride of christ when you're born again is all through covenant and that's why god instituted marriage with adam to show a revelation of christ the last adam and his bride the church his christ's life is in the members of his body, which is the church, and expressed in the same way as husband and wife. You express each other's life in your marriage. You express Jesus' life, but you also express each other's life. Praise God. You are one. You should be one in purpose, one in direction, folks. That's the way God has made marriage, for you to be one in purpose, one in direction, cutting those apron strings, focusing on your marriage, stop listening to all the voices all around. Look, if you want advice, ask for it, but you ask for it together. Ask for advice together. If you want parental advice, ask for it together, folks. Hallelujah. Don't try and get one up on each other or build sides. A lot of people do this. They build sides to their argument by asking their parents. And of course, the parent will side most of the time with their daughter or with their son. And the other side will do exactly the same. It's so important, folks, to be one in purpose and direction. And when you don't build sides to your argument through your family, work it out together because that's the way god has made it and my final scripture genesis 3 verse 20 and adam called his wife name 
Eve because she was the mother of all living. Notice what the scripture says right from the beginning in Genesis 3 verse 20. And Adam called his wife Eve. Not his cohabiting partner, not his girlfriend. He called his wife Eve. And that's so important. So we see that term wife right in the book of Genesis. It's more than a piece of paper. It is more folks than living together this is about being one flesh praise the lord and that's why of course and we'll get into this as the sessions go on why sex even today is an important subject now people sleep around people have all kinds of partners and of course christ if you're a born again believer has forgiven you of your sins 100 percent but now move forward. Now change your behavior because Christ in you wants to live through you. And he's urging you to change that kind of flippant behavior now and say, look, that's not the way I'm going to live anymore. I'm going to express Christ. Hallelujah. So now let's just go to the life in focus, which kind of sums up some of the things I've said already in this session. It says this, God made marriage male and female coming together as one. This is the universal command to all mankind. Marriage is two people, male and female, coming together as one flesh. This oneness is, cre is cre a creation of covenant between husband and wife. So we can't take marriage lightly, folks. It is a covenant, and it's also made with blood. Hallelujah. Being one means that you have one vision, one purpose, and one attitude. And that's why we can't get distracted, folks, by other people's vision, other people's purpose, and other people's viewpoints. We must take a biblical worldview and live our marriage from Christ's life as one together. Amen. Marriage is coming together and staying together. As Christians, now hear me carefully, we should not lose our glue. Remember when it says you'll be joined to your wife, it's like being glued together. And there are many pressures in life that can cause you to lose your glueness to you can cause you to kind of start to break apart from each other and as christian marriage now i want to urge you to view your glueness are you coming apart at the seams are you losing your ability to be adhered to one another as glue sticks together because God wants you to stick together and work through those problems you may be going through or even prevent problems coming by keeping that unity as one praise the Lord don't allow your family ties to disrupt disrupt your marriage men especially sometimes can remain immature by always going back to mum like a mummy's boy or the apron strings. And if you're doing that now, stop that right now. Praise the Lord. In today's world, married couples get divorced. We know that. You must work hard not to become unglued over time by division and moving in different directions. And that is when I spoke about sometimes we can be in the same house but be individuals in that house. And so we can live a life apart, we go to work, we come back home, we have tea, we watch TV in separate rooms all the time. And over a period of time, it never happens overnight, but over time we start making different decisions from one another, start listening to other voices than, than one another instead. And over time you can become unglued. You can be separated here. And God wants you to be one here. 
not separated here in your thinking. He wants you to work as one. And so when when certain things are happening in patterns of life that you may have not uh, at the beginning thought it'd be a problem, down the line it becomes a problem. And so you've got to learn to nip things in the bud. I'll say it again, nip things in the bud, as the saying goes. Don't let problems become a progressive snowball effect. Praise the Lord. Okay. It is important through the storms of life to remain as one. Now, difficulties are coming to your Christian marriage, to your Christian life. Storms will come. But as we know, when storms come, he that is built upon the rock stands strong in the storms. And it's the same for your marriage. It's about you as a married Christian couple. Begin to stand strong in Christ and through Christ, even in your marriage problems, as the storms come to your marriage. Now you might say, because I can hear somebody saying it now, you might say, well, my husband is not saved. My wife is not saved. It doesn't mean that you can't express Christ's life in your marriage still. In fact, it should be more the case because it's part of that witness. You know, sometimes it's the practical areas of life the practical areas of life that cause problems in our marriage. And we must learn, if you have an unsaved husband and wife, to practically live out Christ. Don't just invite them to church. Show Jesus in your home, in your marriage. Express his wisdom in all these things. And that can strengthen your marriage just as much. Praise the Lord. Okay. Decide to work and plan your lives together as one. The vision of planning your lives together means you will stick and adhere to each other as one. Again, what's your vision? What's your plan for your life? Are you, how, do you have a vision just for yourself as an individual? Or is it a, a joint vision, a joint plan together in your marriage? That's so important, folks, because that's how God has created marriage. It's as we're learning in this session 1A. God made marriage. God instituted marriage. God said, wife, hallelujah. God said these things. He's instituted it. He's oneness. Help me together in purpose. Eve helped Adam in the purpose he was given from God to work in the Garden of Eden. They had a a vision of multiplying upon the earth and dominating the earth before he fell. This is so key, folks. This is about oneness of purpose, oneness of vision, planning together these things. Not hoping that one of us eventually give in. That's not the way. It's about together as one. So now let's have a light bulb moment. The light bulb moment says this, identify the circumstances trying to separate you from your spouse. I'll say that again because it's so important. Identify the circumstances trying to separate you from your spouse. Again, that's so important. Identify it because once you identify those circumstances, you can deal with those circumstances. So, discussion time. Sit down together and write down areas of your marriage where you are working apart and write down how that's going to change. I'll say that again. Sit down together, write down areas of your marriage where you are working apart and write down how this is going to be changed. That's so important. That's so important to do. Now, there might be some of you listening to me today who say, I'm divorced. 
Well, I'm going to be dealing with divorce in Built for Life in a later series, but this will all be helpful for you because if you're divorced, it might heal you of some of the problems that, that came about because of your divorce and stop you from uh, creating the same problems. It might stop you repeating those problems in the future. And so we're going to deal with all those aspects, hallelujah, over time. So thank you for listening to Built for Life. And until next time, God bless.